What's going on guys? Welcome back to our digital city build. If you watched the last episode, then you saw that we focused on building the roads first, which was basically the foundation of the city and making sure that everything fit together in kind of a modular or mills way. And this really just laid the bit, the bedrock for the city, excuse me, and made um, basically our first start of the city in this kind of digital build that we're doing. From there, we moved on to building the first building, which was a grocery store anchored apartment building, grocery store on the bottom and apartments up above. Above. If you watch the full episode, then you know that we're not doing the interiors just to save on the computer load, but we are building the exterior so you guys can see kind of what that looks like. If you were to build these in your own city, then certainly you could add interiors and do all that on your own. But we finished with this basically city build where it was one building and some roads, and that was it. That was the first episode. So on today's episode, we're actually going to move into uh, the next few buildings of the city, which is going to be really exciting, and that all starts right now. So let's dive on in. So let's get started. So today, basically we're gonna be building not just one, not two, but three new buildings for the city, which is really exciting. And the first one is actually gonna be based off of one uh, kind of near where we live. It is a Chase Bank building that was built in the 70s, I believe. And it's definitely got that kind of a uh, retro 70s you know, building look to it. And it's freestanding, um, even though in our city it's gonna be surrounded by other buildings. But I think it's gonna make a really cool build. And if you guys have seen our city in the past and you know that we have a brand that we created called Brick Bank. So I think we're gonna adopt this building into kind of a Brick Bank themed building. Brick Bank's logo was uh, blue and red for reference. And so this is gonna basically be a branch for them. So the goal was to create the 1970s feel of the building, which kind of has like a slanted facade on the ground level. So we did that with the columns by using um, the slopes and then kind of creating a backdrop of windows behind it, which was very common in the 70s. And as with most banks, you know, they're, they're inviting, they have big windows. Usually there's a lot of security and protections with those windows, but still they're pretty inviting. And on the actual building just above the windows is the Chase Bank logo so on this one would be the brick bank logo and obviously this is studio so you can't add stickers but basically the logos would be where the blue and red uh, bands are right there above the doors and windows and that would be how the pedestrians would see it from the street from there it was time to start building kind of the core of the building and making sure that it was structurally sound obviously there aren't bricks big enough for this span so you kind of have to get creative by um, building some trusses that will support the rest of the building. And you do this with a combination of bricks and plates, which I'll show you guys how we typically do it. Um, there's always gonna be gaps, especially when you're using unique uh, layouts like this. And so the best way to alleviate any concerns with structural strength is just to add some plates on top. Usually we add them on the bottom as well, but since we're not physically building this, we're just gonna put them on top. Um, and then obviously, you can add even more strength by doubling back on those plates, which we'll do in the future um, as we go vertical with this. But let's work on the floor for now. Again, we're not doing any interiors of the buildings for this digital city build. The reason being is that it would just overload the computer and the computer's already processing a lot with these builds. So we're just gonna do basic interiors and by basic, I mean extremely basic by just doing the flooring. If you're actually building this for your city, you'd want to build, you know, a vault. Um, you'd want to build meeting areas and rooms and teller windows and all that kind of stuff. But for the purpose of this digital city, we're literally just going to lay out kind of a basic floor plan um, and then build the exterior of the building. And just like the last episode, we wanted to build a column in the middle to help support the next floor. We did that on the grocery store build as well. It's pretty easy. You just find the middle point using the plates and then build a column. Um, in real life, you could probably build like a desk around this or a little check-in area to better hide it since it's right inside the front door. Um, but for us, it's gonna add, add stability and that's what we're really going for here. We'll add some windows on the side, although those will probably be blocked in the future with adjacent buildings and we'll add some doors in the back in case there's like a parking lot in the back. If there's nothing in the back, you probably wanna remove these for security purposes for a bank, but I think we're gonna put a parking lot in the back in the future. So we'll add those for now with a little awning above and then finish off the back of it. Again, we're gonna plate everything together before we add the tiles and um, modular plates just for added stability. And that is basically the first floor. So everything is coming together great. Make sure everything is level. And then we're gonna start adding the next level. And honestly, we thought we were gonna go modular with this one, but I think we're just gonna build it as is. 
you wanted to go modular with it, you certainly could. You just add um, tiles and the modified plates in between each level so that you could pop the floor off. But for this one, we're just gonna kind of build it all together. I think if we're adding it to our actual city, we'd probably install lighting and some interior details before sealing it off. But um, the goal for this is just to kind of get this built so we can add it to the digital city. And as you can see, we're kind of uh, still creating that cool 70s vibe on the outside by adding extra slopes. And then we're gonna add the second floor following the same window line. On the real one in real life, there is a balcony at the top. We're gonna try and get that here. It's gonna be a little tight just with the window line and everything, but I think we can still capture it to a degree, at least big enough where a minifig could actually slip in between the wall and the windows. Um, I think it's gonna be about one stud, maybe two studs width, but anyway, we're gonna follow up the columns and continue going vertical here. And the goal will be a wraparound balcony in the 1970s, early 80s style. So we'll build that now. Again, following the same column line, fill that in just as it is in real life. And then I think what we'll do is build just a small gap between the railing and the, uh, I guess this would be concrete in real life. And that is like a true eighties or like late seventies style. So I think it'll look really cool when it wraps around the building. Next, we will add some more windows, kind of finish going around. Again, add that concrete balcony that's there in real life. We're just gonna go kind of three quarters of the way back with it, and then we'll extend the building out to basically create an indoor area in the back. Finish with wrapping the railing around. And in real life, like if you're actually building this, the railing might be a little flimsy, so you might have to play with um, where some of those uh, plates are that hold it up, just to make sure that it has extra support, but I think I think it'd be all right in real life, although over time it might start to sag. So we'll add some tiles up here to create the little balcony. And yet there's enough width for mini figs to step out there. The doors wouldn't open, but there's at least enough width for them to uh, hop out there and, you know, get some fresh air. And then for the inside, I don't think we're going to tile this one on the second floor. We're just going to leave it as is. But I do want to extend the wall out. So we'll add some plates to kind of lay that out. And then we'll come in and build that. It's gonna help with some strength as well for the building. And we'll just bring this up. We're not gonna do any windows back here, although in real life there probably would be. But for now, I think this is starting to look really good. So from here, we'll continue with the next level, which is actually the roof, because it's only a two-story building. Um, we're gonna round it off, or I guess finish it off with some more structural details, just adding one more brick layer before putting the roof on. I think it's gonna help just create a little bit more separation between the roof and the windows. And so we'll also do some uh, inverted slopes, which is kind of carrying that 1970s theme through. Finish it off in the back with some more bricks. And again, this is all for strength. And then just adding one more layer before the windows. And then using the same exact footprint from the second level, pop that on. And then from there, we will go and finish the roof off. And the one in real life has a very um, flat, it's a little bit sloped, it'd be kind of tough to capture with bricks, um, but basically a flat roof. And then in the middle is kind of a core where it houses the HVAC and probably elevators. And so we'll do the same thing here. We'll kind of create a perimeter and then we'll create this little center area going up about two uh, bricks height and then top it off with some tiles so that's nice and smooth. And then in the middle, we're gonna put some HVAC systems. So let's go ahead and change this to a darker gray. So there's a little bit of contrast. It'd kind of be like a gravel roof, you know, that you kind of con you constantly see. And then we'll put um, the HVAC systems in the middle. We're gonna do the old style HVAC, which is a little bit uh, thicker than I guess the more modern ones that you've seen on some of our other builds since this was a 1970s build. So it's a little bit thicker of an HVAC. Now there's probably also elevator systems in the real one, but for now we're just gonna put this up here and just make it purely an HVAC void. And so we'll make these all light gray. And then I think we need some uh, down slopes as well. And we'll tile these just to finish them off. And then that looks pretty good. Okay, so now we need to focus on the details. So the little entry area, we'll tile it off with the same interior uh, colors, not the um, checkered look, but just kind of the, using the light uh, tan here. And then we'll use the sidewalk finishes for the rest of it. And that's looking pretty good. Down here, we should probably put an American flag. That's pretty standard with most US banks. So I think the best way to do that will be a modified plate in the middle, and then we'll surround it with tiles to finish the sidewalk look. 
and then we can go vertical with that. I wish tile those real quick too. Um, but yeah, so we'll go vertical with a flagpole in a moment. I also want to put some uh, landscaping in. And I think the best way to do that is to have it offset a little bit from the building just so that it's not brushed up right against the uh, columns there. And for the flagpole, we're going to use a part that is really easy to find right now. It comes with the uh, new road plate system. It's probably one of the tallest bars that's available in the Lego catalog. And for the flag, it's really easy. We use this design on pretty much all of our buildings. It's a plate and clip um, flag that you kind of just alternate to make the American flag. I think if you're in a different country, it'd probably be pretty easy to make your flag as well using the same technique. And then you just put it on a little angle and move it up as high as you can. And then down here, again, we're gonna put some landscaping or some uh, entryway trees. And I think the best way to do that is just to create a little base and then we'll put some bushes on. Uh, you know what, those are a little bit too big. Why don't we try, let's do, yeah, we'll do the little plant part. I forget what it's called. There we go, that looks much better. Okay, so now we've got a pretty good, except, you know what, one last thing, we need the ATMs. Totally forgot about the ATMs in the bottom right. So let's add an ATM. Okay, we're gonna remove one of these windows, break apart the sidewalk, build it out a little bit. Literally just freehanding this, we'll see how it turns out. Start with a base, and then a little spot for the cash to drop. I think a little panel would be good there. And then we need to build around it. Um, well, there's gotta be a computer screen, and there's gotta be also a place where you insert the card. So let's do the screen first. I think we need to raise it up, we'll put a hinge on. And then we'll just do one of the uh, standard little Lego tile computer screens there. I think that'll look pretty good. Uh, but I do need to figure out how to put a cash, or sorry, a card entry. That should work. Yeah, we'll do that with the little um, modified brick there for where you'd insert your credit card. Put the screen on here. And then we need to just build the ATM around it. We'll put the slopes on there so it's kind of built into the building. Add some more brick bank looking uh, branding around it. And then I think there's like a little gap between the screen and the back of it. But I think honestly, just putting, yeah, that'll work. Just a modified plate. Okay, cool. And we'll go up, we'll add some windows since it was broken out and that looks pretty good. Okay, so this is pretty much the final version of the brick bank branch that'll go in our new city. So let's drop it in and see how it all fits. Um, we got to delete out the little Technic pins so that it'll fit together and line it up and then move it in next to the other building and that should connect right there. Okay, so that's how it looks. I don't love it right next to the tall building. I think something's a little off. Let me play with this a little bit. So if we were to maybe move it elsewhere, what if we move the tall building across the street and then we move this building to the corner? How does that look? It actually looks pretty good. Um, let's fix the, the trees. We need to move those back over to where we just moved the tall building. So we'll edit the road here, put some modified plates in, and then add the trees back. Now I'm gonna keep the trees over by the brick bank as well. I think it looked pretty good. Just need to space them out a little bit better. So we'll add these back to the tall building with the market down below. And then for the brick bank, um, we'll keep the trees over there because I think that looks pretty good overall. Although, you know what, I noticed one other thing we need to do real quick, and that is fix the flag, because it it's probably needs to blow the other way. Okay, I think this is looking really, really good. I think the height between the two looks pretty good. We're gonna put some more low rise to the right of the taller building, um, which is coming up next, because we're gonna build our next two buildings. So let's go ahead and jump into that now. And so we're using the same exact base once again, although I did put some plates on here real quick to already lay it out. The goal is to have each of these two buildings be 14 studs wide with a four stud wide little walkway in the middle. And that is to create some separation between these and the tall building. There's gonna be like a little alleyway. So basically we're gonna turn these uh, light gray real quick because this is gonna be our base, but each building is gonna be a shop space build. Um, and we're gonna use these real life buildings as inspiration. One is a little pizzeria and the other one is a beauty salon and they're right next door to each other. So I think this will be perfect. And basically what we're gonna do is lay these out right next to one another on the base and build them up simultaneously. However, they are gonna have separate detachable roofs so that you could create custom interiors for each. And then again, down the side will be the little alleyway. And since these are a little bit more narrow, I'm gonna use a different door style for at least one of them. And that's gonna be the double door that came out recently. It's three uh, studs wide, six studs wide total for each door, or sorry, for the 
two doors total, but three studs wide for each door. And then I'm gonna put a glass facade kind of around it, encasing it just like the real pizzeria in real life. And then we're gonna build up some brick or modified brick around it to kind of create that little uh, brick texture that's gonna look really good and really authentic. So that looks pretty good for the pizza entry. We're gonna spruce this up in the future, but let's build the back of house for now. So we're gonna go down the side. I'm not gonna go all the way back on this. I'm gonna create a little back alleyway as well for these. So we're gonna go ahead and build the wall and definitely wanna interlock these to create some strength. So we'll create two layers, copy it, and then go up, then delete off the top layer so it's level. Plate it off so that it's nice and strong, and then uh, that doesn't exist in that color. Okay, so we'll continue. And that looks really good. I mean, that's basically the first wall. And in the back, we're gonna add a alleyway door as well. Um, we'll spruce up the back alley in the future, but for now, let's just keep going with the build. And then we need to work on dividing the two units. And I think what we're gonna do is actually just use the white of the salon to carry that through. Now, we're not doing interiors, but I do wanna build just a little um, counter where you basically order your pizza if this was a real build with a real interior. Uh, so we'll just tile it off. And then let's also do the floor real quick. And just keeping it really simple with a dark tan floor, although I'm gonna follow the path of each one all the way around or the tile grooves, if you will. So that way they all line up. Add some more strength on the inside where the bricks don't currently sit. Do that on this side as well. And then add some more plates just to finish that off real quick. It's looking pretty good. And then now we need to start working on the salon next door. I'm just gonna do one main door entry and a lot of glass because it is a salon. So you, they want you to be able to see inside, see what they're doing. So that looks pretty good like that. And now we need to create the demising wall, go up the middle. And this will also be carried through on the other side of the salon as well. And that looks pretty good so far. It's kind of a boring rectangle though. So let's just add in some more flare. We'll add some uh, windows on the side, which would bring in more natural light. And I think it'd be really cool to do a little bit added texture in the middle with, I don't know if you guys can guess yet, but let me just finish this real quick with some plates just to add some more texture. If you're guessing billboard, that's a good guess. Although I think what would be really cool is to do a green wall, which is pretty common these days, especially in more modern buildings or more artsy establishments, I should say. So we'll create a little garden wall or a little succulent wall um, right in the middle there. And it'll also be a nice transition for the alleyway. We'll add a little bench for somebody to sit back here. And this is basically how you would get from the front to the back. And it'd be a nice walkway between this and the tall building uh, in the city once we drop it in. All right, and so now we need to create some sort of an awning, which is pretty standard with salons. I think that looks pretty good. It's a little basic, but honestly, it'll do for what we need. And then we need to just create some extra strength there. And then we need to also build up the back now, now that we have at least the left unit finished on the interior. Again, the interiors are super basic. I get it. I know that you guys wish we were doing more detail, but it would just be too much strain on the computer with so many parts. So we want to try and build as much of the city as we can before it literally crashes the computer. And I think the only way to do that is by not building interiors and just keeping the part count down as much as possible. We're going to try and do exterior details to make up for it and really make those stand out. But for now, we're just doing really basic interiors. But if you guys try building these on your own and adding them to your own city, um, then certainly by all means, you know, build them out, make them cool on the inside and definitely submit some photos to us. We'd love to see uh, these incorporated into your own cities. And we are thinking about adding the, excuse me, we are thinking about adding the um, parts files for these to our website. So if that's something that you guys would like, let us know. It would certainly help us uh, monetize this a little bit to continue building the actual city, which would be great. So if uh, there's some interest there, let us know. We can definitely look at adding these to the website. So I know that was a little bit of a tangent, but basically just keep going vertical for now. We're gonna do a black line uh, to kind of follow the awning all the way back on the building here to kind of create just some extra detail. I think it adds a little bit more contrast and just makes it stand out a little bit more. Um, for the one on the right, well, for both of them, we're making a modular, right? So we gotta add some tiles and some modified plates in order for the roofs to detach and attach back on. Um, the color is a little bit unique on the left, so therefore some of the bricks don't actually exist in the parts that we want, so we gotta use more bricks than we'd like. But honestly, it's gonna look really cool uh, rather than just a nor normal boring color. And we will tile off uh, the salon as well, make that modular. So we could build the two roofs together and detachable all at once, or we could do them individualized. I think for this one, we're gonna do individual 
and it's going to be challenging because it's 14 studs width and there aren't many plates that come in that width so we're going to have to get creative um, and obviously that doesn't exist in that color but it does exist in white so we'll start here and build this one up first and the goal with these is to go at least two plates width in order to add structural stability and you basically just alternate so that they overlap we'll do the same on the um, I forget what color this is called but it's, I think it's like a modified orange or something like that or I don't know, let me know in the comments. I forget what this one's called. But anyway, uh, we'll work on the roof for this one. This one's a little bit more challenging because it doesn't have as many plate options as white. And so like four by six, for example, doesn't exist. So we got a creative here. We'll do a four and a two just to fill that in. And then we'll do some plates on the back. And basically we'll just flip that whole layout and double back it on itself to add support and strength. And then obviously the roof will help once we add bricks up here uh, to add even more strength. But basically these are now detachable. And so you now have a modular building, which is great. And since they're only one floor, we can get kind of creative with the roof and uh, really fill these in. So the roofs on the real one in real life go up pretty far. They have signage, they have lights. And so we're gonna do the same thing here. We're gonna add some lights down below the pizza. It's weird in real life, it's below the sign. I think the sign is backlit. And so I think it's more just like the entryway lighting. And so that's what we'll do here. We'll create um, three of them and we'll use that cool little part that uh, are common in Lego sets for some hang down lights. And we'll add some dish lights down below. I think it's gonna create a really cool, authentic look for this little pizza joint. Um, and so we'll basically make those black, put them on each one. That's looking really good. Okay, so next we need to kind of continue with the roof line and we also need to add the signage. And so I think the best way to do that is a modified brick. And luckily it comes in this color and then their sign is a dark green, but it doesn't exist in the two by six yet. So it doesn't also exist in the threes. So we gotta do three two by twos, but that still looks fine. And next we gotta carry the salon roof up as well. This one again is a little bit more boring because it's just kind of a box, but I think we can get kind of creative here and at least do like a square sign uh, to make it stand out. It'll look a little bit more um, modern, I guess you could call it. And with this, since it's black, they'll definitely have it in that size. And now we got to finish like the actual roof line. And I think in real life, there are some cool slopes and plates that they use. Well, I, I, in real life, there's normal bricks, like masonry bricks, but for the purpose of Lego discussion, they're going to be uh, inverted slopes and plates. And so we'll build this up and kind of create a nice little storefront. And on the, um, Salon, they actually use the same color for the roof line, which was interesting because it's white and black. So here, I'll show you guys again what they look like in real life. How the uh, pizza plates kind of have a, sl a sloped one and then the salon kind of has a flat, but they're both kind of like a dark tan. So we're gonna do that for this one as well. So we'll have kind of more of a sloped appearance to the pizza place and then we'll have more of a flat one for the salon. So we'll carry the dark tan back and do it on both sides. And then I think we gotta tile it off as well. So we'll use the dark tan for both of these. And what's cool is you can uh, do one side and then copy and mirror it for the other. So we'll just do that real quick. Looks good. And then we gotta finish the top off, the top portion of the slope. So we'll use some dark tan slopes here as well. And fill this in with the same colors. And that looks really good. Yeah, I like how that came out. So now we gotta do the salon one. And this one was a little bit more of a flat approach, even though it still kind of creates a um, sloped appearance. It's a little bit more flat in the real one. So we'll do it kind of like that. I think that looks really good. And then we'll carry the dark tan all the way back as well. This one was just slightly shorter than the pizza place in real life. So we'll do that here. But I think that looks really good. I think it's coming along great. Now we just gotta finish off the back walls. And I also want to do a hang down ladder for uh, the pizza place because they would be using a lot of HVAC and exhaust with all of the cooking. And there's probably a lot of grease and other spray. And it's got to get cleaned a lot. So they definitely need some roof access. The salon probably would in real life, but since we put a window back there, I'm not going to do a hang down ladder on that one. We'll just do it for the pizza place. And we'll create like a little trash area, trash enclosure in the back. Um, add some doorknobs to the back doors. And then let's also build up the back salon wall. So that's looking pretty good. Okay, now we gotta tile the front with the standard sidewalk design. Carry that all the way through, all the way around to the back. 
down the little alleyway, finish it off around the, uh, the bench, keep it going all the way back. And again, I like to follow the same pattern all the way through, even though it's tedious, I think it looks better. And then we'll finish it on the front. Okay, that's looking really good. But we should add some more details, like a trash can, because it's a food place, and so people need a place to throw away their food. So we'll add a little trash can up here, and I'm looking for a specific part. There we go. Looks good. I think we need one by the bench, though, because if they're sitting and eating, they want to throw away trash there, too. And now we need to put away, or put, excuse me, trash in the back for the kitchen. And so we'll put a recycling and a normal trash back here for the restaurant itself to use. Put some lids on there, and now let's finish off the roofs. So, um, again, we usually like to add some contrast to the roofs by making it kind of like that gravel look. So we'll do a light gray for these, and we'll do a dark gray for the HVAC systems, just to kind of mix it up a little bit between the other buildings in the city so far. And um, I think what we'll do is put two on each. And we'll do two different styles. We'll do kind of like what we did with the 1970s building. We'll do some bigger HVAC on the pizza place because it would need a lot more with all the venting and everything going on with the kitchen. And then for the salon, we'll do more of a modern lower profile HVAC system. And I put two extra vents in the back where the kitchen would be for the pizza place. And then we'll do it here as well for the salon. And then we'll add some little slopes to hold the storefront up and some more details for the HVAC. And then one more thing I wanna do for the salon is add some solar because they'd be having a lot of electrical needs with the hair dryers and everything else. So I think adding some solar is pretty realistic to what they'd be having in real life. So that looks pretty good. And then just a couple more details. I wanna add a light behind the door here um, at the salon and that's looking good. Okay, so here it is. Here's the final product. I think once it's added to the city, we might add some more trees and greenery out front. But for now, I mean, this this came out great. I would honestly would add, add this to like our existing city in real life. I think it looks really good. Got two stores right next to each other. They're going to be a lot shorter than the apartment building, but I think it's also just good to have different height in the city and in it, kind of how it is in real life, at least in California. I know the zoning laws try and restrict some height here and there, but there's also just like a lot of different variances in height on some of these high street areas in California. So I wanna capture that uh, basically with this digital city build. And so we're gonna remove these Technic pins because they're already existing on the apartment building. And then we're gonna line it up with the apartment building. And I'm glad that we created that little uh, side alleyway because it's gonna create a nice little walkthrough for the minifigs, but it also creates some separation between these new buildings and the windows on the existing apartment building. So again, they're a little bit shorter, but as we add more buildings, it should all start to fill in. But yeah, guys, I mean, it's really starting to come together. I mean, I really like how this little street's coming along. Um, definitely need to add more details to the street, like traffic lights and all that good stuff, which we'll do in future episodes. But I think it's it's looking great. So I really hope you guys are enjoying the series so far. Be sure to like and subscribe for future episodes, and uh, we'll see you guys next video.